It is a beautiful morning here in uh, in Idaho, and uh, you know they you've heard the expression "there's always a first and uh, today would be today would be uh, fitting for that expression because I am going uh, I'm going hunting. That's right. I'm I'm actually going hunting. I've never I've never hunted before. You know, I fished and I I guess in a in a way you could call that hunting, but uh but I've never gone hunting like I'm going hunting here with my with my good friend Kip and uh Kip I was talking to Kip on the phone. Say good morning, Kip. Good morning. <laughs> I was talking to Kip on the phone yesterday and and he was telling me some friends are coming up from uh friends are coming up from uh, Utah to go hunting and I said boy if there's ever an opportunity ever an opportunity for me to join you you know that would be really interesting and here I am the next morning so we're going hunting what are we hunting for we're hunting elk uh, we want a bull a nice bull not not just a little bull okay so what when you say a nice bull I mean you go up and you talk to them and you 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 you, you pour them a cup of coffee and see how they you know how how, how nice they are or well, what, what are you looking for September is the rut season so in September that that's when they will mate okay and the, the those uh, bigger bulls um, uh, you, know, you can pretend to be a bull and they'll come to fight you to keep you away from their cows or you can pretend to be a cow and they'll come to you to put put you in their herd so that they because they're gonna come into heat here probably next week so this week they're gathering their cows next week they'll be breeding the cows Wow so, so this is the prime time to be chasing them although we're a little hot usually um, it needs to cool off a little bit but um, uh, nature kicks in one way or another so uh, hopefully they're up here bugling on us already but we'll throw them a few bugles before it gets daylight and see if we, um, we can get any of them to talk to us so we know what's going to come into us that's what it's called bugling the, the elk will the bull will bugle and the cow uh, she mews um, uh, so uh, now do you bugle both I, I i can bugle i'm not the best bugler let me hear it. Give me your best bugle. It's a, a, I put a reed in my mouth and oh. it, use a tube. You, you'll, you'll see it later on. I'll see it later on. All right. Hey, so I'm curious now. You are you are going to, uh, it, 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 you're bringing a bow, right? Correct. We're hunting with a bow. So you're we need to get the... within 50, 70 yards of, we got to be really close to the animal before we Now, it, you just prefer a bow? I mean, could you just as easily have brought a gun with you? No. The, the, they only allow bows right now in September because okay. it would be cheating to use a rifle um, when the elk are in this time of their life uh, uh -huh. you, you, an, a, a rifle you can shoot out there four or five hundred yards and there's some guys can shoot a thousand yards but um, uh, so you, you all you wouldn't even have to call them in you'd just be able to see them and shoot them uh, calling them in like this though they it, most guys prefer 50 yards or closer. I've killed uh, a, a bull with my um, bow. Matter of fact, where we're going today, um, and I, I shot him at 68 yards. So. Wow. Now I'm I'm curious to know something. Let Let's just say that uh, we were able to get get a bull. Now you can only get one bull, right? I mean, yeah. hunting. What, so yeah, you buy a tag. tag. Yep. You and buy a tag, and a tag is how much for you, Idaho resident? It's uh, thirty-eight bucks. Thirty-eight dollars, and you can get one elk per season, correct? Yep. yep. And you have to do, you you have to tell them where you're going to hunt, because there's about uh, I'm guessing you know 17 18 different tags you can buy and the tag I have I can only hunt this area I had to I'm limited to where I can hunt with my tag and then when September's over that I, my, I won't be able to hunt elk with my bow no more but then I can hunt with a rifle uh, in October for an elk for, for an elk but I can only shoot a cow I can't shoot a I can't shoot a bull with my rifle oh so you could get another elk this year yeah yeah and they're wonderful eating yeah you'll be going home with some meat today whether we're <laughs> successful or not um, uh, and um, they're, they're they're amazing um, now, uh, they're, they're as good as eating a cow uh, now for the for, for the sake of time because I know we're gonna be there and, and I won't be able to talk to you to to, to a great extent but uh, when you when you hit when you hit a bull, okay, with your arrow, what happens if you if you just wound it and it goes running off down the mountain or down the hill? You got to go find it. Yes, um, uh, 
um, and that, that's part of the reason it needs to be so close is um, that way you're not taking a bad shot if, you, if you're within 50 yards you know or that you, you, you can guide the shot and anything in the cavity uh, you know in the you know if you don't hit them in the hips or the front shoulders or the neck that they're gonna die probably within an hour but um, if you hit them up in the, the lungs the, or the heart they, they're not gonna last more than 15 20 seconds Wow. So, and, and um, if you don't hit a rib, it will, um, uh, it'll, it'll be a pass through. You'll go out, the arrow will go all the way through. And when that happens, they, they, they really expire fast. And, and you can hear the arrow, uh, you know when you've hit and when you haven't. Um, but if you hit a, uh, one of these big animals in the hip or, you know, in a muscle, they, they hardly know you've hit them. It's like you, they rubbed up against a barbed wire fence. You know yeah, I mean? and uh, then you got to go chasing them. Well, no, they, they they'll live through it. And, but um, okay, uh, yeah, it, it, you know it isn't. Um, you don't obviously you don't want to do that. But right. It isn't a, a life sentence if you if you miss and and hit them in, in the the hip or the front shoulder. But um, okay, uh, I, I have seen animals uh, that have got hit in the belly. Uh -huh. And that's when it's ugly because oh. because then um, uh, because then they will run off dragging dragging part of their innards and it, it's not pretty and and um, and then you have to f find them and, and they'll they'll usually lay down sick yeah but they probably won't die so you'll have to um, uh, you know have to get up on them again and put another arrow in them hopefully yeah. nothing like that happens to us today yeah do you um how much do one of these weigh I, the, 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 like the the size that you're gonna yeah they're probably around five six hundred pounds and and the meat that you'd get out of that would be what two three hundred yeah, pounds that's exactly right yeah that, See, yeah a big a big big bull would be three hundred pounds and um, the most average bulls um, would be closer to two hundred you know I was thinking about that today because the, I told a lot of friends I got all like I let my excitement get the better of me and I'm calling all my friends and saying guess what I'm doing tomorrow I'm going hunting. And I had different reactions from different people. You know, some people would say, oh, good for you. And other people say, oh, let the animal live. You know, let the animal live. And I, I'm getting ready this morning and I'm thinking to myself, $35, that's a lot of beef. Not beef, <laughs> yeah. but that's a, lot of, that's a lot of meat for $35, you well, know? Well, yeah, and, and there's a lot of people that are anti-hunting and um, uh, they, they think it's cruel, but they haven't went down to the slaughterhouses and, and watched the, the domestic cattle get slaughtered uh, as they eat their McDonald hamburgers. And, you know, they, yeah. they, they, they don't have an understanding of um, what it takes to survive them. But that's because people have moved off the ranch and they're in the city life living. And, you know, I, I, um, I, I, they just don't under, have an understanding of life and that, that life of a, mostly a chicken. You know, when you start exactly. talking, those chickens are raised in little tiny pens and gave all these hormones to grow bigger and stronger so that they have more to, and that there's no, these animals we're hunting, that they're um, out in alfalfa fields all night tonight and spend all their days up on the hillside. And you, know, you, you compare this um, uh, elk's life to one of a domestic cattle's life, and there's no comparing the, the, the quality of life they have had. And and at the end of the day, if you're cutting his neck and hanging him upside down and draining his blood out of him, or whether you're shooting him through the lungs and heart and having him die in 15 to 20 seconds, and um, the animals I've killed with my bull, they don't even know what's happened because it's so clean. They, they'll, they'll, they're a little confused and don't even know and then they expire they, they will lay down wow. and expire so it's really a humane um, uh, you know a, a much more humane way to uh, to kill an animal than than, um, than a slaughterhouse all those slaughterhouses are just they, ugly because they, they're pushing them through the, they, they know what's going to happen they can smell it and but, it, it's a sad sad thing before thank you before we get to the gate here okay uh -huh. I want to ask you this so let's say that we we're we, we're fortunate and we we get an elk yeah. okay there's the uh, there you see it folks there's the Look at that little Bambi. All right. So anyway, the, the all right, boy, folks, you know, good old, good old Kip is, uh, good old Kip is opening the gate, and it's the uh, the gate to a ranch. You know, you're driving down the road, and you always see those signs, no trespassing, private property. You see, there is, uh, here's Kip opening up the, opening up the gate. To uh, to get us in, yeah. 
<laughs> and good old Kippy said his eyesight isn't what it used to be, so he kind of kind of struggles a little bit with the with the gate there. But uh, anyway, so it's a private property, and you know the the the, the rancher Skip or Kip, I should say, not Skip, but Kip uh, Kip knows the the uh, the, the rancher, and. Uh, you know the the, the 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 coyotes. There's a lot of coyotes out here in other parts of this this uh, other in other areas of this part of the country. You know, wolves. There may be wolves here as well, but uh, but the, the the ranchers don't like those. They don't like the they don't like the uh, they don't like the the coyotes or the or the wolves because they'll 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 raid their their livestock. So anyway. It's an interesting experience. I don't know what I'm going to think when I see those beautiful animals coming out of the out of the woods into the into the the opening there, and and good old Kip is uh, is calling them. But uh, but we will see. This is going to be a good experience, and you know probably one of the more interesting experiences that I've done in a long, long time. And uh, and I'm really glad that I'm able to. You got it. Yep. Okay. I'm really glad that I was able to uh, to capture this for you. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be an interesting experience, and you know what? I, if, after you have to be a resident here for one year, which I will be. I will be a resident here in oh, in about another uh, sixty days. And when you've been here for a year, then you're eligible for that tag, which is thirty five dollars. But uh, if you come from out of state, like uh, my brother in law may do next year, a tag's gonna run you about seven eight hundred dollars. If you want to come hunting, uh, I got a moth in here. If you want to come hunting elk uh, here in Idaho, and you're not a resident, so they they make it really really uh, affordable uh, for residents here to hunt. And uh, I may, I don't know. We will we will see as the saying goes. You know, I, I I'm interested to see this whole process. I'm interested to see the the the, the calling, the bugling. I'm interested to see the, you know, the shot, so to speak, the, the shot with the, with the arrow. I'm interested to see the, 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 the cutting up or the carving of the, of the elk. And then I'm interested to taste this stuff. You know, I'm interested to get home and, and put a little bit of this stuff in the crock pot maybe and, and slow cook it or something. So we will see. All right, folks, we'll be back. All right, so we're we're in the gate, and and we're we're going through a pasture right here. We just drove through the pasture. Right here is the the alfalfa that's already been bailed. Okay. And, and now we're getting away from the pasture because the elk are down in the pasture. The pasture for cattle. Yeah, yeah, and and they're they're um, cutting it for hay. It's alfalfa field, and they're they're okay. making hay. Uh, yeah, you know, they're cutting the bales and for their for their cattle to eat during the winter. Okay. But we're pulling away, and we're going to go out away from the pasture because we don't want to scare the elk out of it because they will leave before it gets day. Daylight. Now, are the elk are in the pasture right now? Yep, yep, they're down Are they there. sleeping there? They feed all night because they don't... Oh, they feed at night. They, they, they feed at night because they don't like this hot heat, so they will come down and, and feed during the night, and there's a, a creek in, the, in there, too, and they'll water, and then um, uh, they, they will climb to the top of the mountain where it's a little cooler uh -huh. and, and bed in the shade and spend all day trying to stay out of the sun. Wow. And, now, uh, yeah. these elk, it's a herd? Yep. Yep. It's a herd, and how many in a herd? Well, you know, I've hunted this herd for a few years, and I've killed the one bull out of this herd, and um, uh, there's about 32. There, there, I, the, the year I killed my bull out of there, was six bulls in the um, uh, in the herd, and um, about 28 ca cows. The other day, when I come up here on opening morning, there was two cows, two calves, and a little spike bull. And obviously, I didn't want to shoot the little spike, but it was still fun to be up next to him. And and I did see a nice, a really nice buck deer that I, I got close to to make sure because that that is open also. The you can, you can't shoot a deer right now, but I got a special tag for November. So oh, you I, do? Yeah. So I'm um, I'm 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 not hunting deer today. It'd have to be a really uh -huh. big deer for me to use my deer tag today. So we're driving we're driving up uh, we're driving up to a an elevated spot. Um, Right, I mean that's yeah, and it, it, because we're trying to get above them. I'm I'm trying to time it to where it's getting daylight because I the the regulations don't let, allow you to shoot the animal before um, it's daylight, and in Idaho 
the bow has, um, you can buy illuminated uh, sights, but Idaho doesn't allow that. But that there's no reason to have illuminated sights because you can't, you're not legally, you can't shoot them before it's daylight. So we're trying to get far enough up. That daylight mountain. is what sunrise. Yeah, that's what. That's exactly right. When um, and so in other words, it's pretty daylight before um, it, before the sun's shining on you. But, but you're but you're kind of like on the honor system, right? It, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's and, nobody and out here that's gonna know that I was using illuminated lights. But without them, you can't see your sights. And I, I one time I did go right. There's a little bench right off the field right here, uh -huh. and I did. And the elk were all around me, and I could hear them talking to each other, and I, I could smell them, but I couldn't see them. And and then finally I could see them, but obviously I couldn't even shoot at them because I, I couldn't even see, even if I wanted to shoot. Um, from you have side. limited sights. Is that what you said? Well, the sights that are on the bow to you know aim the bow. Yeah. Um, uh, without it being daylight, you can't see them. Without, so it's like infrared or something. You, you, you can buy them like that, so that but they don't allow them in Idaho. So so you can't be they're, they're, legally. I can't hunt with them, and I don't have. I've never had them because I because you can't hunt with them. So I've never bought any. But interesting. Yeah, there are states that allow it, and it and it does help. Um, now we just it, we. All right, so we've we've arrived, and look at look at Kip getting all ready. Look at that. How many arrows do you have? I only have five arrows with but, me. But you really are only going to need one, right? If we have to shoot. Sometimes I I have killed one uh, deer that um, I missed him the first shot, and it's so quiet he didn't know I missed him, and then I was able to get a second shot and got him. Wow. So, so but usually yes yeah but even rifle hunting um what i find is if you don't kill them with that first shot usually you've spooked them and they're off to the races and gone yeah all right so anyway off to the speaking of off to the races we're off to the mountain this is going to be a little bit of a hike folks and it's dark out i'm not going to share the hike with you but uh, we'll be up there, and what are we going to do? Just find a spot up on the mountain somewhere? and Yeah, I know where the elk are going up the mountain, and we're wanting to get close to that spot, and then we'll call to pull them to the edge, just because they, do, they don't go up exactly the same place, but there's a little bench up there that they can pretty consistent, and that's where we're wanting to be on that bench. All right, fantastic. Let's go. Okay. Needless to say, I'm a bit out of shape. No, not a bit. I'm a lot out of shape, but we're uh, we're making progress up the mountain. Oh goodness gracious! Kip's got a light, and I'm just uh, I'm just following behind till we get to our spot. Whew. And I'll be curious to see what it looks like up here when the sun finally comes up. Okay, so we found our spot. And I wish I could share it with you, but we're on a ridge. And the, the elk are either going to come up, up the valley, which is down below, or they're going to come up above us. What are you doing? Getting your weapons I'm ready? Getting, yeah, I'm getting my bow ready. And I'll, I'll even load an arrow because that much movement, oh, they see movement. Yeah. Oh, folks, this is incredible. Really an incredible experience. I gotta tell you, unlike anything I've done in quite a long time. Okay, so Kip, Kip was just showing me he's gonna bugle. Just wait. 
So Kip's going to do another bugle. That's it right there. Yeah, my tongue goes up against that and, and it vibrates and then I can, I, I can control the sound that comes out. Okay, what were you saying? I, I would hook this on onto here like that and then pull it back using my wrist and then use the finger to pull the trigger and then I'd look through this and line it up with this and that that will that was how I aim. This is 20, this is 30 and that's uh, 40. But then if I'm shooting, if I want exactly, I can move this up and down to give me exactly what you already chimed. And that's the, the green pin. Let's say, it, say it's a 50 yard shot, I can just put 50, and now I use that green pin. Wow. And then if I have that on 20 yards, then that makes this pin 20 yards, but that's 30, for, I don't, like right now, if he slipped up on us and I didn't have time, now I can, say it's a 35 yard shot, I would shoot, put, you know, put his heart right in between the red and, yeah, the, yeah. and the orange. I'll be damned. How oh, interesting. So you're going to pack up the bow. Yeah, we're going to pack up the bow. Okay, folks, so we haven't seen the elk, and it's going on 15 minutes past sunrise. So we're going to pack it up, and we're going to walk down. I guess we're going to go across that ridge right over there. And maybe maybe we were a little bit too early or something, and Kip is going to leave his, uh, leave his gear ready. Kip was just showing me. What is this? This is it's an, a, it's an elk, elk decoy. An elk decoy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and her, her name is Miss September. Miss September? Yeah. Ooh. All right. <laughs> All right, let's get going. Okay, folks, this will give you some idea as to what it's like here. So we were walking through this in the dark. Look at that. What an experience. Something tells me this won't be the last time that uh, that I'm here doing this. This really is. It's very interesting. You know, you know, as we're walking along, Kip is pointing out crap like this. This is coyote crap. You see? So, a coyote decided to take a dump right there. Wow. Incredible. Really, really incredible. You know, there's an expression that the worst day fishing is better than the best day. The best day working. And I would imagine Hunters would say the, the very same thing. You know, Kip was just saying that uh, his hopes haven't vanished because the elk could be coming right up this way and we could walk right into him. So we will, uh, we will see as the saying goes. But isn't this something? Elk hunting. Kip Didrickson. This guy is a horse racing, horse racing legend. We watched a race yesterday that had a three million dollar purse with a 1.5 million first prize. And good old Kip, he won that race years ago. Absolutely incredible. Really, really something else. All right, so we're coming up on a, I think Skip references as a bowl. Look at this.
Look at that beautiful country. I, I killed a really nice six point bull just down from those rocks right there in 2015. And, and there, there was six bulls in the group that year. Wow, that's beautiful. Really beautiful. All right, so we're coming up on the last spot where we could possibly see some, see some elk. So the elk go down to a pasture and feed at night. And then in the mornings they, they head up. Oh, there goes some quail. Look at that. That's a big gun. See, there's the pasture. The green? Yeah, the green. That's where they go down and feed at night. Well, no kidding. So they just didn't come down last night. And it, what is that, alfalfa? Yeah, that's alfalfa. Now, aren't they eating somebody's crop? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah. They're eating someone's crop. Mm -hmm. And the farmers, they can't do anything or they don't? Yeah, the, the fishing game will allow them to, to shoot them and to take care of them, but... Um, this guy doesn't, he, he doesn't care. He lets them eat it. And they, he does keep them out of the haystack, though. They'll put fences around the haystack so they can't get into the haystacks. Uh-huh. Wow. There is still that possibility they come out late, but this is way late if, if they're, I, I don't believe they were in that field last night. All right. So that's it, folks. You see that green field? So normally the elk will go down there and, and feed at night on the alfalfa, and then they'll come back up. Wow, really something else. Boy, Kip just doesn't want to give up. We were standing up there and he said he heard a snort. This is only 20 minutes from my house. Isn't that amazing? I still, I still heard, I heard, I thought I heard a snort. All right, Kip keeps telling me that he hears what are called chuckers. And chuckers are these uh, these birds that are real tasty, and they make a this is where been they make a chucking noise. So we're gonna walk a little ways this way and see if he can't make them fly. Now I'll be chucker hunting up here, I'm sure, sometime this autumn. He's gonna see if he can't make these. These chuckers fly. Oh, I think I heard him. I can't hear him that well with my, uh, with my hearing loss. He's gonna see if he can't flush him out. He gave me one to eat. And I had one with my, with my brother-in-law when he was visiting a month ago. So, we'll see if we see some Chuckers fly out of the brush. All right, we're uh, getting close back to the car. And Kip told me that coming up over this ridge, there's a beautiful view. And this is the way we, this is the way we walked up in the morning. I gotta watch my step. But this is the way we came up in the morning. Look at that. All right, here's another shot there. And there's a, if you can see off in the distance, there's a trail and the elk will, the elk will inevitably make trails as they're
going up and down these these hills and these valleys. So where's our truck? It's right over. You can't underneath. See, there's the reservoir. I see. And so we're right, right, and you can kind of see my truck tracks coming up that. If you look right, yeah. on, you can barely see it. So we're up. At, we're so this morning we walked which way? Right. We walked right straight up this way. We walked straight up this way this yeah, morning yeah. in in the dark. Yeah. Isn't that something? Oh well. Well, thank you, Kip, for uh, for including me and bringing me bringing me out on this uh this adventure uh, i i wish we'd had a close encounter with some elk but uh but it's good being out here in god's country it just um uh, even a, a bad day here is better than uh, a, a good day at work ain't it? yeah yeah it sure is all right folks so maybe uh maybe another trip i i, I have a feeling this isn't my last hike up in in these hills with uh with with kip so have a uh have a great day